Hey guys, so I'm getting ready to make the starter for my Belgian quad that I talked about in my last video. And uh, here we're in Beersmith, um, and I'm just showing you guys the starter and why I'm doing this. Um, I am making a very high gravity beer. In fact, if we come back over, sorry about that. If we come back over here, um, you will see <clears throat> that it's going to be at 1.09. So uh, high gravity. So we need a starter for this. Um, in fact, this helps us to appreciate why. Um, you can see here I'm using the Trappist high gravity Y yeast labs uh, yeast. Um, don't worry about the date because the date matches what I put in there. So anyway, um, without the starter in that package, 96 billion um, yeast cells, which matches basically what the package says, about 100 billion. Um, so if I didn't have a starter, I would need five packages of yeast. But with the starter, uh, I only need one pack of yeast. Um, so I'm going to make the starter here with uh, 2.25 liters. It's uh, obviously going to, I'm going to have here my, my uh, dry malt that I'm going to use. I'm going to use a Pilsen dry malt because I'm making a Belgian quad. So I want something lighter, something that fits that. So I'm going to go with the Pilsen. Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, again, the 2.25 uh, liter starter size here, which will bring me up over 400 billion yeast cells. going to put on a stir plate for a few days and let that run. So uh, here's the details on it. And now we'll get into the, the uh, actual showing of how that's done. All right, so we're going ahead with the yeast starter right now. Uh, honestly, all that's happening right here is just 200 milliliters of water is getting ready to boil. Um, after it's done, I will put it here in this flask. Rather large. Sorry, it's so close. Uh, but with this angle here, let me move it. Um, <clears throat> it'll go in there uh, as a starter and then put it on a stir plate, which you'll see. I usually use a smaller one, but because of such high gravity beer, uh, this time I'm going with the larger 200 milliliter or 2 liter starter. Um, what I got here is a uh, 100, or I'm sorry, a cup about 200 grams of my dry malt extract. And um, what I'm using is uh, just the Pilsen Light because of what I'm making. Since I'm making a Belgian quad, I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, the Pilsen Light uh, DME this time. So about uh, one cup of that. And I'm also putting in a quarter of a teaspoon of this yeast nutrient. I've actually never used this before. Talked to somebody that had it. They said it worked really well in keeping uh, the yeast fortified and giving it what it needed, especially for higher gravity beers. So um, I'm putting in a quarter teaspoon of this now in my starter. And then, uh, as you can see here, it says one teaspoon per gallon. So I'll end up putting five uh, teaspoons or so uh, in my fermenter as well uh, before I pitch my yeast. So anyway, um, we'll come back to this uh, in a few minutes after it's boiling and uh, add the DME and all that and uh, then we'll let it boil for about 15 minutes uh, cool it rapidly uh, just like you would normal beer and then we'll pitch the yeast uh, put it on the stir plate and let it go so the water is boiling now as you can see we're going to just dump in our DME along with our uh, nutrient here not too worried about that happening it's better than a little splash back on me a little powder coming out ain't a big deal and then what we're gonna do here is mix it up quickly so that we don't have clumps, things like that. We wanna get this dissolved in the water as quickly as we possibly can. So I apologize for the fan. If you can't hear me well, it won't really matter because this point uh, is pretty much done. So basically what we're gonna do here is now I'm gonna start my timer uh, for 15 minutes and we're going to let this boil for 15 minutes um, it's kind of like a boil just like you would with beer uh, I'm going to let this go here and then we're going to put it into our um, into my um, can't think of the word it's pretty bad but I'm going to put it into my starter um, tube and we're going to put it on the stir plate and all that but we'll, we'll rapidly chill it first but We'll get into all that. So right now we're just going to let this go for 15 minutes, 14 and a half more minutes, and then we'll go through all that. All right, so we just did the 15 minute boil, and now I'm going to go ahead and add uh, the starter here to the flask. Now, this is still insanely hot, literally just came off the boil. So 
you want to do this slowly and carefully because um, it is very hot you don't want to burn yourself and the other thing I should mention is from this point on literally everything you see here is sanitized so this funnel that I'm using has been sanitized the flask has also been sanitized uh, the stopper that I'm going to put in has been sanitized when I cut my yeast pack uh, all that um, the stir that's going to go in this all that has been sanitized so something you want to make sure uh, that you do so that's basically that there uh, here I'm going to put in the foam stopper in top just to make sure nothing gets in there that's really the only point of this at this point and now we're just going to put water around this like this is insanely hot right here is pretty warm down there you can't touch it um, this is a flask it is tempered glass it's not going to um, it's not going to break to rapidly chill it that's the whole point um, basically it's the same thing you used in science class in high school now my water here is uh, I live in uh, the mountains it's winter time it's December it's about 20 degrees outside so my water is quite cold and I'm gonna bring my water level up right to the bottom of this basically to the point of where it won't float if I get above that this thing will start floating but um, anyway if, you want to get this as cold as quickly as possible, down to about 70 degrees, um, so that you can add your yeast, pitch your yeast, and get going. So that's where we're going to go with this. And, and one thing I should note is, um, for those that are malt brewers and things like that, that's fine. This basically, what you just made here, is, is a step towards malt brewing. It's only a two liter batch of it, but basically it's just your malt. Um, obviously, you might add some grain in a bag in there. You'd obviously add hops, and then you'd let it ferment, put yeast in it, all that. But very similar uh, concept uh, to what was just done. So um, basically, what we're doing here is we're just making a small batch of beer um, that can be fermented minus the hops to allow the yeast to propagate, get the cells way up, and then we can pitch that into our actual beer. Uh, when we make it so i'm going to let this fill up i'm going to let it chill and then uh, we'll come back after that another thing to add when this is happening is if you don't have really cold water like right here i'm like right up against it and this is freezing so this won't take long um to, to chill here with this water but if you don't have really cold water um nothing wrong with taking your sink and filling it with ice uh, and water just like you would with um a beer if you're bringing it down some people use ice baths um, I'm gonna use a wart chiller but some people use ice baths when they do it um, I've done that in the past and nothing wrong with that so if this isn't cold enough to bring it down quickly um, then go ahead and throw ice in there now it is only two liters so it's not gonna take all that long as opposed to five gallons um, but you still want to get it down as quickly as possible so that you can pitch your pitch your yeast and get going with that so uh, you don't want to take any chance of contamination, just like with regular beer. Your starter is the same thing. So, um, we're, again, we're going to let this fill up a little bit more, sit for a few minutes, uh, cool down, and then we'll pitch the yeast. All right, so this is definitely plenty cool enough now, ready to pitch the yeast. Um, it's nice and cool to the touch. I, I spun it around a little bit to make sure it wasn't hot up here, anything like that. Everything's nice and cool. So, um, we're ready to pitch uh, our yeast into this. Uh, I'm going to go with this yeast right here. It is uh, Y yeast 3787 Trappist High Gravity Style. Again, making a Belgian quad, so this is a high gravity beer for that. Um, as you can see right here, it says 100 billion yeast cells uh, in here. And so uh, we're going to cut this open, we're going to throw it in, and we're going to try to get this up to 400 billion. Um, obviously, I have no way of checking that, but it should just automatically come in that range so we got this cut now if you haven't used this before basically the way this works I don't know if you can see in there or not um, there's a package it's just a yeast nutrient that I'm going to take out uh, basically you slap this it opens up and that yeast nutrient uh, it, it leaks out into the yeast and that uh, basically activates it. I add a little bit more of that in, uh, a little bit different. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to pour this in. Again, the yeast pack was sanitized, as was the um, 
the flask, the scissors before I cut everything there. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna throw this little piece in right here. This is the magnet. This is what stirs the yeast, uh, the um, stir plate if you haven't used one before. So we're just gonna to toss that in. And I leave this right here next to it. This is actually the tool that you use to get it out. Uh, rather important because you'd obviously don't want that ending up in your beer. So I'm gonna put this back on, stopper, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch this on. We'll hear it rattling around here in a minute. I'm not sure if you can hear that or not, but it is, it's moving around in there. You'll see the top starting to move. Um, so it's starting to uh, get that swirl going. It's getting a, a, a little bit of a whirlpool action going right there. So I'm gonna let that run for the next couple of days. Now, um, just to show, normally before, this is the size I was using. So pretty big difference. And usually this would only be half full. So this is about four times as much uh, for my starter. Um, basically because, again, of the high gravity uh, yeast, uh, high gravity beer. Um, for all the other brews I've made, I've made uh, oatmeal stout with this, I've made uh, an old fashioned ale, I made a, a porter with this, I made a, um, uh, an IPA with this, uh, a Goza beer with this. This worked fine for all those, I didn't need anything that big, but all the recommendations were having a, a two liter starter for this, so uh, that's what I did. So this here is basically gonna run for the next couple days. Uh, basically what you see here is it. Um, it'll propagate those yeast cells, get them up uh, probably about four times as much as they are now. And the next video you see, uh, we'll be brewing the beer for this. And the way I'm gonna do those is actually in segments. I don't wanna have a half hour long video or longer of all different beer things. So I'll, I'll show like the mashing in process and then the actual boiling, different parts of that. Uh, all that, and we'll just try to keep the video shorter. So uh, hope this helps some of you. Uh, leave comments below. Let me know what you think. Any suggestions? I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you on brew day. Here's the yeast starter uh, about 17, 18 hours after making it. So you can see it's definitely changed color. The yeast is definitely propagating. If you get in there, I don't know how well you'll be able to see, but you can definitely see it floating around, all the little particles. You can kind of see it through there coming up, kind of making that crowsing like it does uh, with regular beer. So uh, that's good, good sign, and be ready to brew tomorrow.